Okay, we're going to start about step 12 in the instruction book, and we're going to start building the payload section. I'm going to find a couple of couplers and your bulkhead plates. And a couple of eye bolt assemblies with the large washer. And we're going to assemble these into the bulkhead. Okay, so washer on the front, washer on the back, and a quarter inch nut. Look, instantly a pair of pliers right when I need them. I just get these nice and tight because later I'm going to put a dab of epoxy on each of these nuts. And then they're going to be sealed in there permanently and they won't come loose. Cool little fusion keychain. So, so far we've built our booster. Four millimeter mount. It's ready to go. It's got good fillets on it. Just a few more things to do. And next in the instruction book is the Cam 1 camera and altimeter mount. We have a separate video at fusionrocket.biz that shows you how to build one of these very quickly. So we're not going to go into that here, but get that built, get it ready to go. You're going to need it later. Next, we're going to build the electronic section, and that'll be the only two you have left. We're going to do that twice. We're actually going to build both of our couplers at the same time, just because they're essentially the same instructions. We're going to test fit the centering rings. These are just a little bit snug, so all I have to do is just lightly sand around the edge. And we're just going to lightly sand until those fit relatively flat. You probably can't see it on here, but we've made a mark one inch down inside each coupler. And we're going to mount the bulkhead plates even with that mark. One with the eye bolt facing up and one with the eye bolt facing down. This one's going to go in this way. So this is your upper coupler, and this is your lower coupler. This one's going to be facing down in the rocket. This one's going to be facing up. And between the two of them, that'll create enough space for your cam one mount to fit in the coupler. And they'll still fit together. I don't know if you can picture that in the finished rocket, but that's how it's going to go together. Okay, now we'll mix up some epoxy and get these glued into place. I've mixed up a pretty good sized batch of epoxy because we're going to do both of the bulkhead plates at the same time. You'll notice there's a hole in each one of the bulkhead plates, the small hole. That's to pass your ejection charge wires through later when you're getting ready to fly. And right now, it really doesn't matter if those get plugged with epoxy because we're just going to drill them back out. They're really just to show a reference of where the hole is for the ejection charges. Alright, I'm going to do a nice pour of epoxy on each one of these bulkhead plates. I'm going to use about half of the epoxy that I've mixed up on each one. And I don't mess around here. I use a lot of epoxy because it adds strength and it we're going to literally coat both sides of these wood bulkhead plates and that's going to seal them in and protect them and it's going to make for a rocket that lasts a long time 
Again, the best way to handle most of this is just to use your finger. Completely spread the epoxy around the entire face of the bulkhead plate and onto the eye bolt and nut so that it seals all that in permanently. And then I like to drag the epoxy up the side wall of the inside of the coupler as far as I can. I'm going to go back and coat all that with epoxy or CA later on. But the further you drag it up, the stronger it makes the bond. You might get a little epoxy coming up through that hole, but you can just put a little piece of masking tape over it. And then we're just going to set that aside and let gravity do its thing. Again, you're going to want paper towels. Lots of paper towels. Same thing here. We're just going to run this epoxy, paying careful attention to the joint of the coupler and the bulkhead. That's where we really want to get the best bond. And then once I know this entire plate is coated, I like to go ahead and pull the epoxy up onto the side of the inside of the coupler so that it really seals that tubing. All right. Another piece of tape over that hole just to keep the epoxy from running through. And then we'll set those aside. We are going to flip them over and do the same thing to the other sides, completely seal them with epoxy. Just want to make sure you don't let any epoxy get on the outside of these couplers. And if it does, you can just take a paper towel dipped in rubbing alcohol and wipe it away before it cures. And that'll keep it clean. Gravity is doing its thing. And it'll end up being really pretty when it's done. Okay, epoxy's all dry on the bulkheads. Nice and dry and smooth. We can go back and drill that hole out, which is going to be for the ejection charge when we fly dual deployment and do that later. We're going to mark each one of these upper and lower. And then we're going to mix up with some epoxy. On the upper coupler, we're going to make a mark two inches up from the bottom of that coupler. And that lower portion of that coupler is going to go into the electronics bay. We're going to make a mark two inches. And we're going to leave five inches of it exposed. And then what will happen is we're going to slide this into the short airframe tube up to the 2 inch mark and we're going to epoxy it in there. And that's going to be our airframe for the electronics bay. So we'll mix up some epoxy. We've got a small batch of epoxy mixed up. We're going to take our electronics bay airframe tube, and it's about four and a quarter inches long. Really doesn't matter which side is up or down. We're just going to go ahead and decide that this is up and make a little arrow. And inside the end of this, we're going to apply a little epoxy. I'd say just about an inch inside the aft end of this tube is plenty. And go all the way around the inside diameter of the tube with the epoxy. And take your lower, lower coupler and bulkhead assembly, and using a twisting motion. 
twist this in until you get to that two inch mark. Which is right there. And then you go inside and with your finger you can smooth this epoxy that's pushed up inside of here and clean up this joint. And if there's too much you can use rubbing alcohol and clean that up real good. So I'm at my two inch mark. I've got about five inches of exposed coupler. I want to make sure there's no epoxy on this so it's nice and smooth. And that gives plenty of coupler for the same thing on your upper air freight, your payload section airframe. It's got an alignment line on it too and I'm going to go ahead and mark up and down on that so just for my reference. And then I've got my upper coupler. And I'm going to apply some epoxy right inside the tube again. Anyway, we've only got a couple hours into this whole build and as you can see it doesn't take long to build a rocket. You can take as much or as little time as you want and do a really do as nice a job as you can. You want it strong enough to handle big motors. But it's really up to you. Okay, then we take our upper coupler, eye bolt forward, and again, we're gonna insert it into that airframe in a twisting motion, work that glue around. Down to our two inch line right there. And then same thing, I'm going to reach inside and smooth out that epoxy that pushed up into the airframe tube and just make that as clean and strong as you can. Set those aside and allow them to dry. You may have wanted to do this before we glued these in, but I still needed to drill the hole out in the bulkhead for my ejection charge wires. And I happen to have a long drill bit. If you don't have one of these, you're probably gonna wanna drill that out before we did the last step. And same on this one. Long drill bit comes in handy. So now we've got our payload section, our upper airframe, electronics bay section, and our booster. And we're going to join everything now. So there's your booster, electronics bay, and your upper payload section. Of course your nose cone will go in there. I like these Robart stands. Some people like them, some people don't. I think they work really good for holding a four inch rocket when you're working on it. You see this one's pretty beat up, it's seen a lot of action. Look, there's your basic fusion right there though. You're almost there. Now we're gonna drill the rail guide holes. And I'm going to show you a neat way to drill holes in this cardboard tubing to make them really clean and sharp. It's a remark you made earlier on the lower line. That's for your lower rail button. Remember, it doesn't have to go into the aft ring. There's not going to be enough stress on there to really cause any trouble. We're going to make another mark five inches from the bottom of the upper airframe tube on that same line. As we build this thing, we're going to keep this line aligned so that when it's all done and the wrap's on, everything lines up, all you're going to have to do is line up the lettering on the wrap and your rail guides will line up. There's no problem with one rail guide being on this side of the seams and this side. If that causes you concern, you're going to be fine. Take your cam one, and let's go ahead and insert that right now. Forward and aft marking on it. It's going to sit right in there over that bolt. Your fingers crossed. Now 
fitter to get. Put your nose coming on. Looks like a rocket, doesn't it? We're going to take a drill with a 532nd bit and we're going to set it to high speed to make a nice clean hole on the line on each spot. Then take a little thin CA, put a drop in each hole. And you can see it start to soak into the cardboard. Just let it wick in. Don't worry about the hole being very clean yet. You just want to soak the cardboard around the hole with thin CA. And I wouldn't even use any accelerator. Just let it sit and soak into the material so that it really hardens the hole. Go back to your sanding block and sand around the hole after the CA is cured. Just sand it flat. And with your 532nd drill set on high speed again, re-drill the hole. It makes a very nice clean hole for each of your rail guys. Now that we've got everything lined up here, we know that our upper coupler goes inside the airframe tube about two inches. So we're going to measure an inch down here and we're going to make a mark right about there. And we're going to evenly space four plastic rivet holes to hold this section together. So we're going to go ahead and drill one of them. But you don't want to harden it yet because you don't want to glue it to the other section of tubing. We're going to take this apart after everything's drilled. And then we'll clean up all those holes and harden them with the CA glue. So you snap that in until it snaps. Now that holds that section together. Well, this section can still come apart. So now you can measure around this tube, evenly space one inch down and put a total of four of these plastic rivets. You could put six if you wanted to, if you wanted to be extra secure. But four usually does just fine. So those are the four holes for our plastic rivets. Now you got to take into consideration we are going to have a lens hole in that section later with the camera. So there's going to be plenty of ventilation, but you're also going to want to drill a couple of vent holes. Uh, in this compartment that will allow the altimeter to sample. And we'll do four of those evenly spaced and they can be the same size, about 5 30 seconds to 1 8 of an inch in that neighborhood. The 5 30 second works perfect for the plastic rivets. So if we didn't have a camera, these holes would allow the altimeter to sample the air pressure. Okay. Now one other thing we're going to do is that alignment line up again. So we're going to go to a sixteenth of an inch bit and drill some vent holes. Sixteenth of an inch, very small bit, very small hole that will allow the air pressure to equalize inside the airframe as the rocket goes up. And it's especially important on faster burning motors. The thing can literally push the sections apart from the change in pressure, causing an early deployment and a failure of your flight. So we don't want that to happen. These holes will allow the pressure to equalize. I usually draw them right below, right near 
the rail guides on that line. Now we've got a 1 16th inch hole in our upper payload compartment. The electronics compartment gets plenty of ventilation. It's got lots of holes in it. The booster is next, so I go right in the middle of the airframe and a sixteenth of an inch hole. Just a little guy. Now, just like the other holes, we're going to want to th soak those with thin CA. Soak them with thin CA. And like I say again, I don't like to use accelerator here. I like to just let that sit for 20 minutes or so and just really soak into the, the paper. These are nice and dry. I just give them a little light sanding all around just to smooth them out for finishing. Nice. Then we can re-drill these holes. And make sure those stay open through the painting process. And just re-drill them if necessary. But those are nice clean little vent holes. We'll sand these down a little bit. Okay, I just want to show how easy these are to get out with your fingernail. It's a little bit of work, but they do come out. And then if you accidentally break one, it's best just to drill it through, push the pin through it, and then you can pull it out. You don't even have to drill it, just break it off. That's normally what will happen is the top will break off one of these rivets. And you can just push the stem through, pull the base out, put a new one in. So we've got these holes all cleaned up in our airframe for the vents, rail guides, and other vents. Now we can pull this whole thing apart. But you can see now that we have holes in the coupler where it connects. And what we're going to want to do is, now that these pieces are apart, we're going to go ahead and add the CA glue and harden those pieces. which will make them a lot more durable. So thin CA wicked into each hole. And just allow it to soak in and cure on its own. That's the way it's going to be the hardest. And then you'll remember on the booster, we sealed the edges of all the tubes with thin CA. And we're going to want to do that again. You can wait to do this till final finishing. But I kind of like to do it as I go along. Just saves time later on. Keep a paper towel handy if you get any big globs on there. Remember, good ventilation because this stuff is very strong and will make your eyes tear up. Into the whole inside of this tube. Get you some ventilation. And once the whole inside of that tube is coated, We're going to let that cure and we're going to go back and sand these holes and re-drill them so that they're nice and clean. I'm actually going to soak the whole outside of the tube as well because it'll harden it. I'm going to go back afterwards with sanding block and clean up this whole coupler to make sure that it still slides. Pay attention. 
attention to that joint let it soak into the airframe and coupler junction there just like that we're going to be able to sand it very cleanly it's going to make a really hard smooth shiny surface which will slide into that other section just perfectly so I'm going to go back and do the same thing to the top of the electronics bay. Soak in the edge. And these are little tricks that I do to all of my rockets. All I build is cardboard rockets, so I've learned how to make them last a long time and make them really rugged and durable. Same thing, we're gonna coat the inside of this with CA, thin CA. Available at fusionrocket.biz. We sell both thick and thin CA and epoxy. Everything you need to build. You know, and epoxies, everybody's kinda of got their favorite cure time on epoxy. I've just found through many years of building that 12 minutes is just right for me and so that's what I sell and that's all I use. I don't use 30 minute, I don't use 5 minute anywhere. It's available but I don't use it. Let that cure. Mm, aha. Same thing on the bottom of the coupler. Remember the bulkhead blades have already been sealed with epoxy, so you're just working down to where that epoxy layer is and hardening all of the exposed cardboard. You got that? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the outside of this coupler, and then that should be the last thing I have to seal. I want to do the opposite end of this one. There's always something else. Now we got lots of doors open for lots of ventilation. Because that can't be good for you. So this hardening trick, this is all stuff that I learned from years of building RC airplanes. Same thing, I'm just going to harden inside this tube as far down as I can reach where the nose cone is inserted. And another thing is when we get to flying this thing, I'm going to show you how to use shear pins. Which means you're going to be repeatedly drilling through the side of this to add shear pins so it doesn't prematurely separate. So you want this as durable as possible. Let all that cure, go outside for a while, take a break. So now I'm just gonna go back and sand every one of these couplers inside and out. And all the holes that we drilled, we're going to sand them down as smooth as possible so that everything is going to slide in, in and out nice and smooth. But you'll see that makes a nice smooth surface that'll slide in and out easily. We're going to do that to all the ends that we saturated with CA until they all look just like that. If you want to, around the edges, you can use a Dremel with a sanding drum and I do it these holes that I've drilled in here to join the sections We're gonna go back and you know I've sanded it so we go back and clean them up and re-drill them 
And it makes a nice clean hole for your plastic rivet to go into. But inside, there's a little bump from the adhesive that we put through there, the CA glue. So you can take a drum sander on your Dremel and, and flatten those spots out. Now we've cleaned the inside of each of those holes, and including the vent holes. And you can go right around the inside here just to clean that edge up if you want. Now is a good time to set up your cam one. A GoPro mount. You'll notice the cam one is marked forward and aft so you know where the front of it is and your camera just pops right in there. There's a little key that goes in to secure the camera in. You can put a piece of wire through the hole just to keep that key from falling out of there. And what we're going to do is we know this thing sits in the bottom of the altimeter bay and it fits right over the nut on the altimeter bay and it's got these foam pads to give it a little bit of standoff but it fits really nice in there and now you'll see that the camera lens is going to stick out of the hole don't kid yourself and think that the camera needs to be moved back into the mount so that it fits in here this actually is going to hold the entire mount in position during flight so it's designed to do that so we know that from the bottom of this mount, the bottom of the lens on mine is right at three and three quarters from the bottom of that mount. If you were to add the foam on there, let's just be safe and say four inches. And this is three and a half. So we know that half inch up of this, on the opposite side of the rail guide line, this is going to be where the rail guide of the rocket is, so you want your camera lens on the opposite side. We're going to put it right about between those two rivets, or right next to those vent holes, excuse me. And it's going to go a half inch up into this tube is where it's going to start. So we know that that is going to roughly get us pretty close to where our lens is going to be. So you're provided with a camera lens hole template and you can cut that out with scissors. Just that particular part. And just line it up with the mark you just made. Make sure that it's where you want it on the airframe and I think that's pretty good I might go this way just a little bit and when you got it where you want it press it down onto there peel the backing off and then you can pull the center out of this and that shows you where your lens hole is going to go roughly so we'll drill it, and then we're just going to gouge out a nice rough hole with a knife so that we can go back with the Dremel and really clean this hole up, and we're going to cut it right out to the decal. Once you fly with a camera, you're never going to want to fly a rocket without one again. It is so cool. So I've hit this with a Dremel and smoothed it out a little bit. At least I can test fit and see how it all works. 
Once we get this all clean and the way we want it, we're gonna go back and add CA glue and harden that, that hole out. You're gonna to wanna to do lots of test fits and you can see that my camera fits pretty good in there. It's gonna be off to the side a little bit. And like I say, that lens protruding through will literally hold this entire mount, keep it from rotating during flight. So don't worry that a little bit of lens actually sticks out of the hole. Okay, geez. Ooh, dude. See, matter of fact, this won't even go together until the lens is in the right place. And then that literally holds the whole thing. Yeah, just the right spot. There we go. The whole mount is held in place by the camera. So now we're gonna go back and clean up this hole. We'll saturate it with CA glue. We're gonna sand it with the Dremel sander again with the camera out of there, of course. And we're going to really bevel it down inside the, the rocket so it doesn't interfere with the camera. And then it'll make a nice clean hole and that part's done, pretty simple. Okay, so we got a nice clean hole cut for our camera. And I've gone back with the Dremel and the CA glue and I've hardened the hole and made it nice and clean. And then I like to take a black Sharpie and you can do this after you put the, the body wrap on as well. I just do it now so it's done. And you blacken the inside of this hole, which will look better when it's all done. And then also if the camera happens to pick up a little edge of the hole, it's black instead of cardboard colored. So we blackened the inside of that hole. Now we're ready to move on. I'm gonna reassemble the whole rocket. And I like to test fit the rail guides onto the rocket. And then I take them off for finishing. But right now, I'm gonna show you how they go on. We use rail buttons from railbuttons.com. And they're really simple. It's two washers, a spacer, and a screw. And we already hardened the holes that we drilled at 5 30 seconds of an inch earlier and we hardened them with CA and all you do is just snug them in there now when we do final assembly after the whole rocket is covered and painted we're gonna put a dab of thick CA in there and then insert the screw and that's really all they need they're not gonna they're not gonna see a lot of side-to-side -side force if they do something's wrong There it is. So you've got rail guides. Now we're going to seal the fins with a mixture of epoxy thinned with rubbing alcohol. Okay, I'm mixing up a small batch of epoxy here that I'm going to thin with rubbing alcohol. And we're going to coat these fins. And I've got a I've got a decent brush, nice size tip that should, should, should brush pretty well. Make sure it's a disposable brush because this is epoxy, it's going to harden. You can clean it with alcohol if, if you're really quick and get a couple uses out of it, but these artist brushes just won't take it for very long. So I'm mixing up a little batch of epoxy just like I normally would, 50-50 mix, and I'm going to thin it with 70% isopropyl rubbing alcohol and I put just enough in and stir it up until it starts getting a, a thinner consistency probably a little thicker than milk so it brushes well and stays smooth just Our brush and we'll 
start brushing it up. You remember to work pretty quick. I'm using 12 minute epoxy. This would be a good place to use 30 minute epoxy or even finishing resin which you can buy that is like a thin epoxy that brushes on. But I'm doing the edges, sealing all the edges first. And then I'm just going to cover the whole surface of each fin, both sides, fairly quickly so that I can do it before the epoxy starts curing. And then of course after we prime this we're going to go back and sand it all and it'll just be smooth and hard surface. It'll be just like fiberglassing the fin without using cloth. And if you wanted to fiberglass it with cloth, this would be the time to do it. Even with the alcohol, this epoxy gives you plenty of warning when it's starting to cure. It gets pretty hard to work with pretty fast. And if that happens, just stop and mix up a new batch, find a new brush, and mix up another batch, start over. I've done rockets where I didn't do this at all, where I just primed it, sanded it, painted it. And if you prime it and sand it enough, you, you can fill the wood grain. It looks pretty good. I've just found through the years, trial and error, when you're flying larger motors, which I tend to do a lot, you want the fin to be as hard as possible. And on bigger rockets, like level three rockets, I do go ahead and add the fiberglass cloth. But on most of these four inch rockets, this plywood is really strong by itself. And just adding the resin seems to be enough to make it really durable. Make sure you do the edges real good. That'll make them look nice when it's done. And try not to let any build up that you're going to have to sand off because the epoxy is not easy to sand. That's why we thin it out so it brushes on real smooth. And then we're going to make sure that it's all smooth and there are no runs on it before we, before it starts to cure. Okay, I've done both sides of all three fins. And I'm just going to give it a once over and get any little dribbles that I left. Have a drop here and there. Just smooth it out with your paintbrush. You know you're you're adding epoxy, so if it gets onto the airframe tube, you're only making it stronger. Not a bad thing. If you see any spots that don't look quite right, give them another shot before your epoxy dries. But you can see both sides of all three fins are nice and smooth and shiny. That's it. Let that cure. When you build the cam one, I just glue them together with CA glue. But it's when you're sealing the fins, you just as well go back and seal the whole cam one as well. Take some time and and not only won't make it stronger but it'll make it shiny and st it'll stay cleaner and it, it'll be stronger. So if you've got the extra epoxy from your fins you just as well do this too. It'll tie the whole thing together. It's like a good rug. I don't usually paint my cam one but I do like to seal them. Okay, next the instructions tell you to look for the seam that's on the nose cone. And most of these seams are pretty subtle. You can sand them off with a sanding block. Or you can take the back side of an X-Acto knife blade, not the sharp side, and scrape it off of there. That works pretty good. 
and then of course you can go back with your medium sanding block and sand that seam smooth and then roughen up the whole surface of the nose cone just to get it ready so that it'll accept primer a little better. Primer will stick to it better that way. It doesn't take much. Just rough it up a little bit. Now, as soon as this, we're gonna we're gonna tighten up the nose cone with a little tape, too, a little masking tape around the shoulder. But now the whole rocket is essentially together, and once these fins are dry, it's ready for primer. So when we come back, it'll be all primered. And we'll take it from there. So I've wrapped masking tape around the bottom of the nose cone, the shoulder, and on mine it's taken two pieces, and I do it top and bottom, right over each of the ribs on the nose cone. Because you want it to be able to come out of there, but it needs to be somewhat snug. And that's even just a little bit loose. I might just go one more wrap of tape. And uh, it's still just a little floppy. As long as you can still get it out easy. Just put it on there as smoothly as you can so that it doesn't snag. Perfect. Okay, once we start primering this thing, we're going to lose our reference line here. Our holes are already drilled, but in order to have an idea when we're putting the decal on, I like to leave the base of one rivet in. It keeps it from rotating, at least the electronics payload section. Um, and then just keep an eye on the rest of it. You'll be able to see it through primer faintly, but it's going to get to the point where it'll go away. We're also going to take the rail guides off now because we're ready to prime. Take those off and set them aside. Don't lose them. I ain't gonna send you any more. Okay, ready to prime it. I like to start at the back and get inside the motor tube area, the back sides of the fins, the edges give them a little shot of primer and remember this is primer we didn't sand anything we're not doing anything fancy we're just getting primer on that's mostly going to be sanded off and then all this will be nice and smooth and we're done so we don't need to waste a lot of time if you want you can stuff paper towels down inside the motor tube keep paint from getting in there I'm not vegan. So I've get, gotten a little bit on the back edge of each fan. I put a very light coat on all three fans. I usually do the bottom first because then I can stand the whole rocket up and shoot the thing, the whole thing with primer, let it cure, take it inside and start sanding. It's going to be one more light coat over the whole base and then I'll stand it up and do the rest of it.
I have gravel, which is really nice to stand it on. <clears throat> but you could use a piece of cardboard, a piece of wood. All right, and the next steps in this instruction book, it tells you to go ahead before you prime and paint it to install the shot cords and parachutes and protectors. I like to wait until I'm completely done painting the rocket so that I don't get everything all messed up. See the rocket's all primed, ready to go, everything's dry. Uh, now we're gonna sand the entire thing. I like 220 grit sandpaper and 150 grit. I usually start with 150. And then I also like to use uh, sanding blocks. You can get these foam sanding blocks and they work really good on the fins. And they come in different grits, 120, 180. I believe that this one is a 220, so it's more of a fine finishing one. We're basically gonna sand this till, I would say 80% of the primer is gone. And then we're gonna hit it with a light primer coat and then paint it again. sanded smooth, it's been primered, fins are nice and smooth. We're going to go ahead and put the decal on there. In the instruction book, it, it instructs you to paint it you know, roughly from here down and the nose cone area with white. And you can do that. Um, the spray paint that I use takes a good 24 hours to dry. So if I did that, I wouldn't be able to put the decal on till tomorrow. And I want to do it right now. So I'm going to put the decal on first and then I'm going to go back and mask off the decal and go ahead and paint the fins and the nose cone separately. So you don't need the nose cone for this step. So we'll take that off. Plastic rivet. Yep, I'm going to leave one plastic rivet base in here just to keep these two sections together. And then I'm going to go back and check my rail guide alignment here and those lines are still lined up and you can very faintly still see the red line the alignment line so i know that's all in good shape and that's where it's going to be after the decal is put on so the decal is a digitally printed full color self-adhesive decal and we're literally going to roll this onto that airframe and we're going to try to get it to start as close as we can to the rail guide alignment line. And then little by little, we're going to work it down. The nice thing about this is if just take your time and be calm and relax. Uh, it's not permanent until you really burnish it down. If you are just getting the alignment set up, you can always whip it right off of there and it'll come right off several times until you got the alignment just perfect. And if it helps you, you know, draw a line again. Uh, redraw your rail guide alignment line so you know exactly where it is. I know where it is because I've got the rail guide holes. But uh, you can redraw the line if you want to. Now this is the bottom of the airframe. And, and find the flattest table you have. And you're going to work on the edge of that. And what we're going to do is, we know this is the bottom of the airframe. And it's got to cover all the way over the top. We're going to start on the rail guide and we're going to start rolling it on to the airframe and then burnishing it down little by little as we go. And like I say, we're not going to push anything down permanently or hard until we're done because if we get to the other side and our alignment's not what we were hoping for, we can yank the whole thing off and start over again. Shouldn't be a problem. And do whichever way you're comfortable with, but this works for me. You could leave the backing on, fold a portion of it back, get it started and keep pulling it off as you go. Um, that works. And I'm going to show you this way. Yeah, 
And if we line that up with the table as straight as we can, and there's my rail guide alignment line, it's going to be right there. And that should get it started pretty close to where I want it to start. Creases don't go away, but bubbles do. And just go right over that rivet base that you left in there. <clears throat> we can cut that out later. And just make it lay down as smooth on the airframe as you can. And take your time. Don't get discouraged. Vinyl does not hide any defects. So take your time and do a good job sanding because you're not going to hide anything with the vinyl. It'll look just like paint once you've got it all burnished down and all the bubbles out of it. Just take your time and work everything out individually. Just go back on the decal and push everything down, every little bump and air bubble that you see. And they'll just go away and eventually that thing looks like paint. And like I say, you could take as much or as little time as you want lining the decal up. I got mine on there. Pretty happy with the alignment. It's a little bit off. But you got to remember that's the side that's going to be up against the rail. So you won't see it on liftoff. And then go back with a sharp exacto knife blade, trim the end of the tube, uh, trim open all your rail guide holes, trim the sections apart between the electronics bay and the payload section. And that's it. Oh, cut your lens hole out for your camera. Your vent holes. Vent holes. Make sure you clear your vent holes. There's our camera hole. And just go back and look for any little bumps or bulges and press them out. It's an air release vinyl and they will nearly all go away. Now we're going to mask it right here to this line and just paint the fins and the whole can section. All right, I've got a really sharp knife and I've gone through and cleaned out all of the rivet holes and vent holes, including the rail guide holes and the vent holes, the really small little vent holes. And then we're going to, we're going to mark the little vent holes with the decals that are included in the kit. They have a, a dot printed in the middle, and I like to cut that circle out of there. And then just line this decal up on the vent hole that you made. And then that kind of reminds you that it's part of the rocket, and you need to check that before you fly every time to make sure that hole is open. Press it on there. Peel the sticker out. There's the 
the hole and I just widen that vent hole right up in the center of that thing. Peel it off. Now we're going to trim off the excess decal around the top using a very sharp knife. Just run it right around the edge. And roll that material onto the airframe. And we're ready to mask and paint the seam between the payload section and the electronic section. Same down here in the booster in the electronic section. Very light coat, as even as you can make it. that cure for about 15 minutes and then we'll hit it again with about that much more coat and then I'll usually do like a third gloss coat and that's it. That's it for about 15 minutes, and then we'll come back and do a second coat, and then a gloss coat. And then we just put it somewhere where we don't touch it for the rest of the day. And there it is. I've got the nose cone and the tail all painted. I masked it off, painted it, took the masking off. The paint is actually still wet, so I'm not going to touch anything. But uh, we're going to let this sit overnight and dry. And then tomorrow we're going to come back and add the rail buttons, all the recovery gear, and basically get it ready to go out to the field and fly it. There you have it.